Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. And again, quadratic equation is a polynomial equation where your highest exponent is 2. Now, what do you need to know in order to solve using the quadratic formula? First of all, you need to know the quadratic formula. <laughs> so x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In a minute, I'll explain to you where all of those little a, b's, and c's come from. We also need to know how to simplify square roots and how to reduce fractions. So if you've got all of these in your toolbox, then you'll be able to solve using the quadratic formula. So your first step, know the formula. You can make up a story about what B and A and C stand for. You can sing it to Pop Goes the Weasel which I'm not going to attempt right now, but it's public domain, so I could. Um, but you could sing it to, you know, x equals opposite b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I just did it anyway, didn't I? Okay, um, <laughs> sounds silly, but it works. But I think one of the best methods of memorizing it is every time you use it for a problem, you rewrite it rewrite it and say it out loud to yourself. One, because it gives you a physical of writing it. Two, it gives you a visual. You're going to see it over and over again. And three, it's going to give you an auditory because you're going to say it over and over again. The more senses that you use to try to learn something and memorize something, the more likely your brain is going to access it when you get nervous, like when you're trying to take a test. Okay? So trust me, it takes an extra, what, six seconds per problem to rewrite it. It's going to take maybe a little bit of extra paper, but it's a lot faster, easier, and cheaper than taking the class over again, right? Okay? So just trust me on this. You've got to know the formula. Now, where do all of those little variables, the a, b's, and c's, come from? So the variables in the formula come from the coefficients in the quadratic equation. So if you have the quadratic equation set equal to zero, and it's in proper format, descending powers, x squared, x constant, all of the numbers here are your a, b, and c in alphabetical order. Pretty cool, huh? Now, the nice thing about the quadratic formula, I know we've already learned how to solve quadratics using factoring, but sometimes those polynomials aren't factorable. The quadratic formula always works. doesn't matter if it's factorable or not. The quadratic formula always works, so it's nice to know. So the second step, after you've learned the formula, is to set the equation equal to zero and plug in. So let's look at this example. 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. It's in standard format, equal to 0, so our first coefficient here is going to be our a, which is 3. The second one's going to be our b, which is negative 2, and the last one is our c, which is negative 1. So let's remind ourselves of what the quadratic formula is. And now let's plug in. We've plugged in the b, which is negative 2. Notice here it's the opposite. Somebody will say negative b, but really it's the opposite of whatever b is. So if our b started out as a negative 2, it's going to become a positive 2. And if you want to go straight to the positive 2, that's fine. I just wanted you to see why it changes. And then we also had the b put in there. Here are our a's for the 3, and then the c, which is negative 1. Once you have everything plugged in, our third step is to reduce the fraction. So we just take everything and reduce it. The minus a negative 2 there is going to become a positive 2. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Here, some people have trouble with the signs. Remember that that minus 4, that little hash mark there, also plays double duty. It also means negative 4. So when we're multiplying, negative 4 times a positive 3 is a negative 12. Negative 12 times a negative 1 gives us a positive 12. Negative times a negative is a positive, which is why we have a plus here. Now, this 4 plus 12 can be combined to give us 16. The nice thing here is 16 is a perfect square. So we have plus or minus this, so we have two different numbers that we're going to be looking at. The first one is the x plus 4. Again, the 4 is the square root of 16. 
and now that gives us 6 over 6, which is 1. Our second one has the minus sign, 2 minus 4, which would give us negative 2 over 6, which reduces to a negative 1 third. So you need to know the formula, you need to be able to plug in, and you need to be able to reduce. Okay? Now, there are three possible types of solutions when you're dealing with a quadratic formula. One, you can come up with rational solutions. If you come up with rational solutions, you could have factored it, which is fine. You don't have to unless the teacher requests it. Um, if it just says solve, you can use whatever method you want. So x equals 1, x equals a negative 1 half. But if that square root is not a perfect square, then the square root is going to be left in your answer. This is called an irrational answer because you have irrational numbers in here. It's also possible to get a negative underneath that square root, which means you have no real solution. So if you're in Algebra 1, you may not be covering complex numbers, which involves imaginary numbers or the i. So you're just going to say no real solution because you cannot take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. If you're in Algebra 2 and you've covered complex numbers with the i's, then you can ask your teacher, do you want it in the real number system or do you want me to put the i? So it depends on which class you're in as to how you would show those results there. Number of solutions, we'll just go over this real quick. It depends on what's underneath that square root, but it's all based on your, um, <laughs> you know, this, based on the graph. You're looking for your x-intercepts. So you can either have two solutions, one solution, or no solution. No real solution because there are no x-intercepts. This is where your complex answers would come in. Okay, so now I want you to try. Here are two examples. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot using the quadratic formula, and then when you're ready to go over your answers, go ahead and hit play. Okay, are you ready? Let's take a look at the quad, <laughs> feel like a cheerleader. Okay, quadratic formula. All right, um, <laughs> don't know why I did that. So here we've got a quadratic equation. I went ahead and wrote down the quadratic formula. Remember, you want to have that physical memory, the touch memory, kinesthetic, write it down. It's not set equal to zero, so you may want to kind of make note of that. We need to change it. Set equal to zero, so let's subtract three from both sides. So we get 5x squared minus 6x minus 3 equals 0. Now here is our a, b, and c. So not only do you want to write down the quadratic formula, but also say it out loud when you write it down and when you fill it in. So we've got the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 6, plus or minus the square root of our b squared minus 4 times our a times our c. Extend that radical. Everything over 2 times our a. And now we can simplify. Opposite of negative 6 is a positive 6. Plus or minus the square root negative 6 squared is 36. Then we have a negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20. Negative 20 times a negative 3 is a positive 60, so be careful with your signs. 2 times 5 gives us 10. So we have x equals 6, plus or minus the square root of 96 all over 10, but we're not done yet. Okay, we're going to keep going. The reason is, a couple things. The square root of 96 even though it's not a perfect square, it's not simplified completely. There are some factors in there that are perfect squares that we can take out. Second, we need to reduce this fraction if we can. What some people do, unfortunately, is they reduce the 6 and the 10 here, and you can't do that. Remember, you still have terms up here. You've got addition and subtraction. You cannot reduce with addition and subtraction. Everything has to be multiplied, or at least every factor in there has to be divided by the same number. So let's go ahead and reduce the square root of 96. Let's see, so we have 6 plus or minus 
is that 6 times 16, I think. So 4 radical 6, all divided by 10. So notice you could divide out a 2 here from the 6 and the 4 and then reduce the 2 and the 10. Um, but a quicker way is to reduce every piece by the same number, which is basically what dividing out that 2 means. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that gives us 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 divided by 5. Now, just to be sure that you understand that this plus or minus means that we have two numbers, he numbers here. 3 plus 2 square root of 6 over 5 and 3 minus 2 square root of 6 over 5. So, your teacher may request that you write both of them out. 3 minus 2 square root of 6, all divided by 5. And 3 plus 2 divided by 6, all divided by 5. And there are your two solutions. And if your teacher lets you leave it in this form, bully for you, not a big deal. Um, but a lot of teachers want to see both of it just to make sure that you understand that there's two solutions. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the next one. Again, quadratic formula already written. Quadratic equation already set equal to zero. So we can label our a, b, and c, a, b. Now notice the b here is not the x, okay? It's the negative one in front of the x and your c. So if you need to write that one in there, just so you can visualize it, go for it. And now we plug it in. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. Okay, so now let's reduce. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do it just for yourself. Um, the opposite of negative 1 is 1. Plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 6, negative 24. Negative 24 times negative 2 is a positive 48. So double check your signs. See how you're doing so far. So that gives us x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 12. I'm going to continue it on over here. What's the nice thing about the square root of 49? It's a perfect square. So we have 1 plus or minus 7 divided by 12. But remember this plus or minus gives us two different results. Even though some teachers allow you to leave your answers with the plus or minus if you've got um, the radical there, okay? In other words, it's an irrational answer. If you come up with a rational answer, in other words, you have a perfect square, Reduce it to the numbers that you're familiar with. Go ahead and give those two results. I'll just put two little arrows here. So we have x equals 1 minus 7 over 12, which is a negative 6 twelfths, which reduces to a negative 1 half is one of our results. Then we have x equals 1 plus 7 over 12, which is 8 twelfths which reduces to two-thirds. So there are our two solutions. So don't forget, watch your signs, be sure you know the formula, be sure you reduce any radicals that you can, and reduce your fractions as far as you can. So how did you do? Take a look and see where you made your mistakes. Was it in plugging it in? Did you set it equal to zero? Were you able to reduce it okay? There are different places that people kind of mess up and they need to, to work on. So just find what it is and fix it. Yeah, easier said than done, I know. But go to your teacher and ask for help. So remember, set it equal to zero before you use the formula. You can have between zero and two solutions. Watch out for that negative number underneath the square root and reduce your final answer if possible. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Or at least it was better than, I don't know, drinking your own bathwater. So <laughs> don't forget, you have a lot of resources, videos, teachers, friends, tutors. Go ask for help.
Don't let your pride keep you from passing. You're not alone in this, okay? Okay, so we'll see you guys again soon.